So as Pam said, the next speaker is Habya Abdullah. Uh, location, abundance, and persistence of CAR CXCR5 transduced T cells within lymphoid tissues of SIV infected rhesus macaques. Thank you for speaking. Okay, so first I'd like to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to present our work here today. So today I will be starting from BAM was uh, just ended and focus mainly on the preliminary finding about location, abundance, and persistence of, of our transduced T cells. Other way? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is a simplified version for our study design. So what we did is that we isolated rhesus PBMCs and transduced them with a CD4 MBL CAR 6 or 5 construct that Dr. Edberger at NIH uh, made it. And then we took the transduced T cells and infused them back into the art released SIV infected rhesus macaques. For today's talk, I want to Draw your attention to two key components of the car, which is the 6 or 5 and CD4 MBL. So 6 or 5 is a B-cell follicle homing molecule, which should enable the transduced cells to home to the B-cell follicle. So my first question was, where did the cells home to? Did they home to the B-cell follicle? My second question was about persistence. How long did they last? after infusion. The second part of the car, which is CD4 MBL, should enable the transduced T cell to bind to SIV on the surface of SIV infected cell. So I asked the question and looked to see if there's any direct contact between the viral RNA positive cells and the transduced T cells. And I asked if there's a association between reduction in viral RNA and, and treated versus control animal in situ. And to answer these questions, I use RNA scope combined with immunohistochemistry, where I used a probe specific for SIV and another probe that I designed to be specific for the transduced T cells. So my first question, where did this cell localize to? So this is a lymph node tissue section stained with DABI. So DABI is a nuclear stain and shown in blue here. And stained with CD20 to label B cells and delineate the B cell follicle. So this nice cluster at the periphery of the lymph node is the B cell follicle, or B cell follicle. And this is a zoomed in one. And the transduced cells are shown in red color, which were detected with RNA scope. And you can clearly see that they were able to successfully home to the B cell follicle at six days post treatment. Then I wanted to know how long did they last after infusion. So here again, I have representative lymph node tissue section stained with DABI, nuclear stain in blue, CD20 to label the B cell follicle. So this is the B cell follicle, and this is the B cell follicle. And CAR 6 or 5 or transduced T cells are shown in red color. So I was able to detect them for at least 28 days post-treatment. And they were most abundant, as you can see, at six days post-treatment. And they started to decrease gradually over time. So you can see less at 14 days and less at 28 days. And I found something interesting when I was doing this. I, I was trying to how long, to see how long they lasted, I noticed something interesting. So here again, I have the same staining combination, DABI, blue, and CD20, the B cell follicles, and transduced cells are shown in red. So what I noticed is that at two days post treatment, you can see the transduced cells tend to locate at the outer edge of the follicle and in the periphery, like, I mean, like at the outer border of the follicle. And they seem to be expanding and proliferating as you can see here and here. But by time movement and like after, uh, when I checked the six days post-treatment, a shift happened and the cells started to accumulate inside the follicle. 
and you can see here a closer view. So you can see this is the edge of the follicle. They are like at the outer edge of the follicle and outside the follicle, expanding. And by six days post treatment, they shifted and accumulate inside the B cell follicle. Uh, after that, I wanted to see if our cells are actually proliferating. So to confirm this, I did some Ki6 C7 staining, and this is a preliminary data. And here we're looking for a completely different staining combination. So I used IgM to label B cells and delineate B cell follicles. So these two clusters are B cell follicles. And I used Ki6 C7, which is an activation and proliferation marker, and shown in green here. And I used I mean, the RNA scope to detect the transduced cells, which is shown here in red. So what I found is that there are transduced T cells inside and outside the B cell follicles that wear Ki6 T7, which indicate a recent proliferation. So to wrap up, like now we have, we know that the transduced cells home to the B cell follicle, which we think is the correct place we want them to go. And they persisted for at least 28 days post-treatment and they show evidence of expansion in situ. So what does this mean? Are they actually doing something there? So I wanted to see like, if they're having an impact on the virally infected cells. And importantly and very interestingly, I found like in lymph node, at two days post-treatment, I saw in more than one occasion, but this is just, again, prim preliminary data, that there's a direct contact between the CAR transduced T cells and the virally infected cell. So here again, Debbie is in blue. This nice cluster is the B cell follicle, and transduced cells are shown in red, and the viral RNA is shown in white, so this is the virus infected cell, and this white haze is the free virions trapped by the FDC network. So we can clearly see that they are interacting in situ, which is great. Which led me to ask if there is an effect on the level of viral RNA. So if I see a difference between the treated versus control. And I checked for now only one animal, so this is very preliminary. Here again, Debbie is the nuclear staining blue. CD20 is a B cell follicle. Here it's kind of long shaped. And SIB RNA is showing, uh, showing in white. And you can clearly see that the treated animals had less viral RNA compared to the control animals. And here, this is a virus-infected cell, and this is the FDC network. So this is the free virion trapped by the FDC network. So to summarize what I have, hmm, I think the slides moved, okay. To summarize what I have found, we found that the CD4 MBL CAR605 transduced cells home to the B cell follicle, they lasted for at least 28 days post-treatment, and they showed evidence of proliferation and they were able to interact with SIV infected cells in situ. And we show from the preliminary data that we have that there was a reduction in the level of viral RNA in treated versus control in situ. By this, I'd like to thank uh, our lab members uh, at the University of Minnesota Scanner Lab and Tim Shaker Lab for helping me starting the RNA scope and Steve for helping in designing the probe and Dr. Edberger Lab at NIH for making the construct and the Wisconsin National Primate Center for taking care of the monkey treatment and tissue. And our collaborator, Dr. Les Connick at University of Minnesota, and the NIH, believe, and Menrich for the funding. I had the community slide. So just to wrap up, like, so the main question we were asking, like, does immunotherapy, do the immunotherapy cells home to the B cell follicle? And how long do they last after infusion? and if they were associated with reduction in virus-producing cells. And what we found is that they, home to the B cell follicle, interacted with virus RNA, positive cells, and persisted for at least 28 days post-infusion, and were associated with reduction in virus-producing cells. And hence, we think that our novel immunotherapy is effective and may control HIV infection without medications. By this, I'd like to thank everyone, and I'm more than happy to take any question.
CD8s or? At CD8. I mean, I mean, we run CDUs PBMC, so we have both CD8 and CD4. And have you tried to look at whether it's CD4 or CD8 cars uh, that are getting into the follicle? I mean, it's in my to-do list, but I mean, I haven't done it yet, but I'm planning to do it. Yeah, this is just very preliminary, like we just recently started, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so um, the, I, I don't say lift nodes, but it looked like the ones that had the CAR T cells in it were a bit disrupted in terms of the structure. Uh -huh. is, is, is that me fantasizing, or is that actually a real uh, finding? Like, if you look at it, do, do the T cells disrupt the, it looked at the CE20 standing was much more diffuse in the lift nodes that had the CAR T cells in them. Um. Can, I mean, can you repeat it again? Sorry, I don't think I got what you mean. So compared, like, so you had some lift nodes that had CAR T cells in them, and you had some of those, I mean, some follicles that didn't have them in them. Uh -huh. It looked like the ones that had the T cells, the structure was a bit diffuse and perturbed. Oh, no, I mean, usually, like, it's, it's variable between one follicle and other, and no, it's not like, it's not like a fixed, I think. It's variable between one, like, even without the same section, like, each follicle can have, like, different, it's not related to the Mm -hmm. And and then in the, um, I, I know Pam showed this earlier, but do you have like a ratio, like how much of the CAR T cells were actually in the lymph node versus how much were in the periphery? Uh, at six days post treatment, I can I didn't do any quantification. This is just preliminary, but I can say at least 80 percent, not maybe 85 percent, are inside the follicle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the last slide that you showed, where you had reduction in the viral yeah. RNA, mm -hmm. what day? Post this one was 28 days post treatment. Oh, so it was the last day. Yeah. 28 days. Mm -hmm. Did you go longer than that, or that? You, did I what? Sorry. Did you, did you see after that also? Or I no? have 60 days post treatment. Then we have the necropsies. I'm still. I'm going to look in them. Yeah. But this is what I have so far. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Maybe one more. I guess the follow-up question is. Mm -hmm. uh, Yes, the, in the slide that you showed, um, there was a, a marked difference in the amount of CD20 positive B cells mm -hmm. in the CAR positive versus the controls. And, um, and why, what, what's the reason for that? Okay, so you mean the last slide, the very last one? No, it's sort of the ones in which you actually, let's say the, the slide that said compared day two, six, 20. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, what happens like sometime, yeah, with the Debbie, with the Debbie staining. No, it's the CD20 staining. Oh, yeah, Keep yeah. going. This one, right? right there. Yeah. yeah. Actually, this is the, I mean, this part is a B cell follicle. If I turn it off the blue, you will see like this is a B cell follicle, but the Debbie is kind of oversaturated, so it's kind of covering the green. But this is the follicle, I mean. This is entirely follicle, like this entire circle. Well, I guess yeah. the comment is, is that the CD20 staining is very different between day two and day 28. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Next up is Mike.